In today's video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the history of the second poodle type, the miniature poodle. Welcome back to the Fenrir Poodle Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at Fenrir, canineleaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high-level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. So let's get started. To understand the history of the toy poodle, we need to understand the broader history of the standard poodle. The poodle is one of the oldest breeds around. While most historians of the breed agree that they have their origins in Germany, they were actually developed in their own distinct breed in France with the purpose of hunting waterfowl. There are several theories of how the poodle came to be. It's widely believed that the breed is a result of crossing several European water dogs, including French, German, Hungarian, Russian, Portuguese, and Spanish. However, others believe that its ancestors are the Northern African barber. Another common belief is that they descended from Asian herds dogs that travelled with the Germanic Goth and Ostrogoth tribes to eventually become the German water dog. Despite its history being unclear, what is clear is that it was a very old breed. There are illustrations of the poodle-like dogs on many Roman and Egyptian artefacts and tombs. Drawings and statues show dogs that look incredibly like modern-day poodles, bringing in game nets and herding and retrieving animals from marshes. These illustrations date back to around the 1st century BC, and although some believe that the miniature poodle emerged shortly after the standard, many believed it wasn't much later until around the 1400s that breeders began and developing smaller versions of the standard poodle. The poodle was widely recognised for its intelligence and that they were easy to train. As we've already said, their primary function was to hunt and retrieve waterfowl, but they were also being used to sniff out delicate truffles. The truffle was a highly desired prized delicacy in France. It's the fruit of an underground mushroom that is popular in French cuisine and many other nations. The poodle was great at sniffing these out. However, the problem hunters had was with the standard poodle was that it was too big and would regularly crush these delicate tender mushrooms, leaving them useless. They needed a smaller dog that could hunt, yet preserve the prized delicacy they, they were seeking. So the miniature poodle was developed with the intelligence and ability of the standard poodle, but the smaller size to carry out this important job. The miniature poodle was achieved by selective breeding and not by breeding the poodle to other smaller breeds. Breeders would continuously select the smallest of the litters to breed with each other until they finally achieved the desired smaller size. Breeders would continuously select the smallest of the litters to breed with each other until they finally achieved the desired smaller size. Once breeders had attained the proper size, the miniature poodle became the premier truffle hunter in all of France. But unlike its ancestor, this poodle doesn't like the water and would predominantly remain on dry land. Word of the new miniature poodle soon spread around France and they became desired amongst many because they had the same strikingly good looks but high intelligence of the standard poodle. This high intelligence coupled with their desire to please made them a perfect fit for the travelling circus. Travelling gypsies heard of this new miniature breed and took them on their travels and they taught them how to perform and they became an instant hit with the crowds. They'd perform tricks, dress them in costumes and even shape and sculpt their coats to fanciful shapes, much to the delight of those in the audience. The circus crowds instantly fell in love with the miniature poodle and they soon became desired by the Parisian higher classes. They were kept as house dogs with no real purpose other than companionship. They were recognised as a great companion because of their high intelligence and eagerness to please their owners. This was the beginning of their journey to becoming the most popular type of poodle amongst all three. The breed became popular in the United States in the 20th century and they're now the base for nearly all the designer breeds like the Cockapoo and the Labradoodle. The miniature poodle has a rich and long history. Not just a designer breed, they were developed for a specific function and were recognised for their abilities and intelligence to do with the tasks. They've captivated the imaginations of people across the world for their looks, intelligence and companionship. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comments section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have three dedicated poodle videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Poodle Show.